So, hello, welcome to this interesting case we've had uh, the other day. This is a, a root canal on a, an upper left four. And there was a suspicion halfway through this root canal that there possibly might be a joining canal. So the two, uh, the patient attended with, with pain and upon um, looking at the x-ray, we can see that there's a, an apical infection and the tooth has already been accessed by another dentist. I think it was me. Sure, I'll have to check the notes. Um, I think it's me because I've used PTFE, uh, PTFE tape here to dress the tooth, which I think is a really, really useful way of dressing the tooth. If you use cotton wool pledge it, it just gets um, mixed in all of the, uh, the temporary filling so it's really difficult to get out. Um, so I think if I have accessed this tooth, I haven't um, really gone looking for the canals. There's an argument to say that when you're dressing a tooth, you don't go looking for the canals. I know um, a really, really eminent dentist, um, Sanj uh, Banjeri, he says not not to not to not to you know get down the canals. You just want to dress the pulp chamber and and let it go. So I'm just going to go straight into um, into root canal dentist mode now. I I'm just using a size 10 K file just to just to gently explore the coronal to mid third. I'm not gonna go anywhere near the uh, the apex with these, okay? So I'm just gently, gently exploring with the size 10K file. And then I'm gonna use a high flex 2005, I think it's 2005, just to um, expand the coronal third and get that all nicely and open. You'll notice that when you expand the coronal third and mid third, uh, the, the, the um, the, the ham files will more easily get to length and also you're less likely, likely to uh, to transport or uh, ledge the tooth. So um, I think that the buccal canal is probably um, more patent than the, than the palatal canal. So that is the first canal I've decided I'm going to explore. So I'm gonna use um, uh, the the high flex 20 again just to really really expand um this uh this this orifice opening and i'm using the iriflex tips just to make sure i get lots of irrigation in there and i like to fill the canal space and the pulp chamber with um with hypochlorite so uh, once i know that i've opened up the coronal to mid third of the tooth i'm now going to use a size 10k file and i feel like it's going quite easily to length here so um, I'm, I'm just going to connect it straight up to the apex locator i'm going to very very gently just um, move it down into the apex until we hit zero and um, as you can hear here we're just about getting there a um, little, little bit tough and then again straight away when I'm thinking it's getting a bit tough I'm thinking there's two canals it's a bit tough to get to length um, it, do they join that that's that's in the back of my mind and um, we've uh, just checked the measurement here the, uh, the the zero reading is 21 that's really really important because um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna shape with the hand file in the buccal canal 221. But when we um, when we shape with our uh, with our rotary files, we're not going to use it to 21. We're going to step it back 0.5, and that's really just to account for the apical constriction. So m m more irrigation here, and as you can see, I'm going to use the rotary file at 20.5, not 21, and this will account for, like I said, the apical constriction. And you know, just gentle pecking. Um, you know, they say you should just peck it tw three times, but you know, sometimes I like to live on the edge a little bit. And what I'm checking here now is I'm just checking to see if the, the canals are connected. So I'm just using um, uh, the, the hypochlorite and, and, and it, there's a suggestion there that they might be connected, but I'm not entirely sure. So once I've shaped the, uh, the buccal canal, I'm also gonna shape the palatal canal. And again, um, this is going to length pretty easy. So I'm just going to use a size 10K file just to get to lengthen. And I say it's getting there easy. I tell a lie, really. It's not getting there really easy at all. And again, this is sort of ringing um, alarm bells in my head, thinking to myself, um, it's, it, do these canals join? Because usually when, they, uh, when, when it's difficult to get to length, it means that they join somewhere and it's difficult for your hand file to, to sort of reach around that uh, anatomical anomaly. 
So I'm just going to use the size 10k file, watch winding, just to get to, to get to the working length again. And again, I'm watch winding um, to the zero reading on the apex locator with the hand file. And I'm just watch winding, watch winding, pull, watch winding, watch winding, watch winding, pull. I don't want to be pulling up and down because what I don't want to do is I don't want to um, create debris um, apical to my file and it blocks the canal. That's really, really, really important. Again, lots of irrigants. And as you can see here, the, 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 the working length is 18.5. So I'm gonna um, match the uh, rotary file to 18 millimeters. And then I'm just gonna shape to length. So super, super, super careful. And lots and lots of irrigation. So I'm gonna do that hypochlorite test again. And I am just um, pushing hypochlorite into the uh, canal space and um, sucking it out. And, and I suppose in a way you could see that the, 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 the hypochlorite is um, draining in both canals, but I suppose when you look at the buccal canal, it doesn't drain completely. So in, in my mind, it might be joined, it might not be. It might just be joined by, you know, um, sort of lateral canals. So the one way to check to see if the, uh, the canals do join is that you use the GP and file technique. And um, what you do is you place a GP point in, in a canal, um, make sure it goes to length, that's important. And then we're gonna use a, a size 10K file to place in the adjacent canal to length and we're gonna inspect the GP point um, and to see if it's been marked. Okay, so if it has been marked, it, it, it does join, but when we look at this, it, you notice that it hasn't been marked. Okay, there looks like a little tiny mark there on the end, but actually I think that is just um, like a manufacturing um, uh, anomaly there. I think that's just like a little bit of staining from the, from the or the dye from the sort of red band around the top. So, Despite the hypochlorite draining, the, 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 the sort of uh, technique we use with the, um, with the GP point and the ham file um, is not conclusive. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to take um, a cone fit radiograph and this means we're going to get the, the GP points in position and we are going to um, take a, an x-ray. Okay, so another um, Another indication that the, 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 the canals join is that both the GP points don't fit to length um, when they're in at the same time. And in this case, it does. So, you know, I, I'm not convinced they are joined. So we take an X-ray, okay? And you're running on time, everything's going swimmingly, and you see this, okay? So t to me, one of them is, is long, okay? Well, it looks long, there's, there's an appearance that it's long. And as soon as I see that the, uh, the, the, the that it looks long or even short on the uh, on the radiograph, I'm straight away checking with the apex locator again. Okay, and when we check with the apex locator, the working length is still correct. Sometimes the working lengths can be incorrect because you've took the working length at the start, you've shaped the tooth, there's been a bit of a curve on it, and the fact that you've um, shape the tooth makes the working length shorter. Okay, so I'm, I'm always checking, I'm always checking. And in fact, you know, we've, we, we check the uh, working length in both canals. I get the GP points, I make sure that they are both the same um, length and at the length of where the working length um, mark is, usually on the cusps. And I am convinced that it's at the right length. So I'm going to make a command decision here. With experience, I am just going to arbitrate tooth. I'm going to, I'm going to um, trust the apex locator over um, the, the radiograph. And to some people that might feel like you, know, you might be uncomfortable with that, but actually in, in real life, um, doing that, you should just really trust your apex locator. Your apex locator, especially if you've got a good one, um, they they can be more truthful than, than a radiograph. Radiograph, of course, works, but you just 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 trust the apex locator. So the final thing we do before we obturate, we irrigate the tooth, um, and we ultrasonically activate the irrigation, and then we are going to use paper points to dry the tooth. 
And in this case, the uh, the sealer we're going to use is again AH plus. Um, for some reason, I'm using AH plus a lot recently. Um, although I have gone back to using uh, a bisphenolic sealer. I think in this case, I probably thought I might use a bit of heat and um, and that's the reason why I've used the AH+, because you, you remember you can't use um, most bi-ceramic sealers with heat. And what I'm doing here is using a heated plugger just to cut off the excess. And then I am gonna push very, very firmly with the heated plugger onto the remaining GP. And I'm gonna condense it right down or compact it right down, that's the better word. And then I'm gonna wait 10 seconds and I'm gonna pull away. And I noticed there that the GP has stuck nicely to the sides because it's not a completely over, um, circle canal. And then there's, I'm going to use a, a BNL um, warm gutter perky unit to backfill the, uh, the, the, you know, the remaining space in the canal. And then again, just going to use the uh, Mach 2 pluggers just to give it a good old compact down. I, I always say this in all my videos. I used to be really, really sheepish about compacting down the GP. Um, I used to like be super worried about um, uh, extrusion of my obturating materials. Um, but now I know with a bit more experience is as long as you've got the apical diameter correct, you know, you're not gonna, um, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna extrude any uh, uh, of the obturate material if you've got your um, you've got the correct uh, diameter on your cone. And what I didn't mention before with the uh, with the dry run, I'm making sure I'm feeling for tug back. So um, again, you'll notice that in the, when, when we're looking in the microscope there, um, there is uh, a tiny little bit of sealer that's sort of squirted through the uh, sort of mid third of that canal. And I'm just putting this GP pointer length, and then just doing exactly the same as um, as the uh, the other tooth. Uh, sorry, the other canal. I'm cutting off the excess. I'm going to compact it down with the heated plugger. I'm going to pull it away, and I'm going to backfill. Um, if you're a budding endodontist, um, I don't always use the backfill, but when I need it, Christ, I really, really need it. So don't don't be scared in buying buying something like this it, it comes in really really handy every now and again uh, and again just giving a good old compact down with the uh, the mac 2 pluggers um just like don't don't be scared get get in there give it a good old push So with the resin sealer, um, you can't um, remove it just with a simple uh, uh, three-in-one tip and water. In this case, you need to use, use isopropyl alcohol to, uh, to to get rid of the sealer, and actually it works amazingly. So use a bit of isopropyl alcohol, give it a wash and clean. Now I'm going to use Vitribond. This is a, a light cure glass ionomer. This is to seal over the top of the obturation. So if the, um, you know, the overall composite filling or the crown fails, it's still got that kind of last line of defense. And then I'm going to use um, a, a sealing unit and something called, uh, sorry, a bonding unit and then something called STR. And this is, absolutely love this. This is a, um, a bulk fill composite which flows and I can't tell you it's expensive I'm not gonna lie to you but it just quickens um, the uh, just the, 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 the this final part sometimes you know you're using like a like a composite in a capsule and you're doing it layers it gets stuck to your instruments and etc etc this stuff is absolutely fantastic and we look at the x-ray Super, super, super happy. Um, we've noticed that we've got a little bit of uh, sealer puff on maybe a lateral canal there. That's always nice to see. And overall, super, super nice result. So if you like this video and um, you want to see more, I really like making these videos. I like showcasing some things that I do. I love dentistry. It's really, really interesting. If you have any um, requests, if you think, oh, I'd love to see this, I'd love to see that, it, in the comments below, you just message me. Similarly, if you have any criticisms for today's case, again, I'm not scared of criticism. You tell me what you think and we can have a nice um, uh, discussion, an adult discussion about it, and that'll be that'll be interesting for everyone to, to sort of weigh in on. Because dentistry is about 
discussion, isn't it? You know, not, not, not everybody's right, and um, I'd love to hear your comments. And as always, like and subscribe. Okay, I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.